calling all scientists. Any of you out there with a scientific mind that wants to learn something, I wish to, uh, I need help to test a theory and uh, because I'm disabled, I'm unable to get out and go to the cinema. And uh, I uh, put many, many videos about my 3D system. But I need somebody that will go to the cinema using my system and watch a film and uh, sit as far back as you can in the cinema. Unfortunately, modern cinemas are small these days and it's not good for the 3D effect. Um, if, you, if you live in an area where you have a cinema that is long rather than these short, uh, you know, in <coughs> what they call them, uh, where you've got a lot of theatres, all, cinemas all in the one place, more like a TV viewing room than the cinema, actually. <laughs> anyway, I need somebody that can go to a cinema with a big screen and use my system to test it. Now, my system is actually totally different to anything that any other system. For a start, you don't need anything special. Um, you learn to, you can learn to speak French, you can learn to speak German, and you can learn to do all sorts of things, because you have a very clever brain up there, far smarter than any of the computers, including the one I'm on now. And if you can learn to, to speak French, or German, or whatever, learn anything different, why on earth can't it learn to, to convert a 2D image into 3D. Now that's the basic principle of the way my system works. Now, <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> I studied electronics in 68, and part of the course in electronics is the optic system, that is to say the way the eye works and the way the brain um, interprets what the eye sees. And through all this knowledge, through the years, <coughs> as a boy, I was a boy projectionist in the cinema in 1953 when the very first 3D films came out. And I thought, why can't we do that without these rubbishy red and green glasses and whatnot? Why do we need the glasses? And I've been trying to work out a way to do that for years. I forgot about it until the BBC in 1993 came up with this um, called Filich system or something like that anyway, whereby they pan the camera and it keeps spinning round and round and the left eye sees slightly after what the right eye sees. And uh, <clears throat> I looked at that and I thought, well, it works, but it is absolute nonsense. You know, the camera keep moving. Surely there's a way it can be done without that. Now, there was no eye definition or anything in 1993. And, he, you know, uh, <coughs> the quality of picture was rubbishy compared to what it is today. I mean, you get a better picture on a, on a cell phone than you did on TV in those days. But anyway, <coughs> let's get on with it. So my idea was how to teach the brain to do that. And the way, the way is so simple um, that I discovered that if you slightly defocus the image to one eye, preferably the non-dominant eye, and you can easily check which is the dominant eye. If you place your finger up in front of your nose, look at your finger close up, close one eye, close the other eye. If you close the the uh, non-dominant eye, it will, incidentally, you must do it without glasses on. If you close the, if the finger moves out the way quite a lot, you'll know that, that you've, see now I'm closing my left eye and the finger stayed where it is. If I close the right eye, it moves right over to the 
other side of the screen. And this proves that I'm right eye dominant. So therefore, you want the right eye, your dominant eye, to see as clear a picture as possible. You need the left eye not to get a good clear image. Now, if you're, if you're somebody that wears glasses and you're looking at this screen now, all you need to do is tilt the glasses up so your left eye is not is out of focus because you haven't got your glasses on and uh, everything's back to front and it? it didn't like a mirror you will see that my hand is coming out now I've discovered since 1993 that I can now see TV in 3d without any glasses at all um, I'm only wearing glasses now because close up to a computer screen or something like that I need them but uh, normal viewing distance for a television is a minimum of, of three meters yeah the further away the better and clearer image you'll get <coughs> and also the better 3d effect you'll get <coughs> I hope this is not running on too long because for some reason <coughs> you can won't uh, take more than 10 minutes whereas YouTube will let me go on for as long as I like virtually probably because I'm a good customer of theirs now if you go to my website you're on it now anyway if you're watching this you will see a number of things that I put on and among them is a demonstration tape of me 20 years younger in 1993 demonstrating how this worked but at that time I didn't realize that eventually you wouldn't need the glasses the only thing is I found that occasionally um, I do what I call a top up you know like if you learn a language you need to refresh occasionally otherwise you forget things and it seems that uh, although I still see it in 3d by giving a refresher with the glasses it it um, builds it up a bit and uh, <coughs> but it's something I don't do very often. I don't know how long it, it'll take you to learn because no two brains are the same. And also, I don't actually know when I started seeing it. I just was looking at TV one day and I thought, bloody hell, that's in 3D. I'm not wearing the glasses, so why is it in 3D? And uh, uh, <coughs> that's how I worked out that in actual fact, your brain learns to transcribe 2D into 3D. And it's damn sight cleverer than these 12,000 pound computers, TVs that you get that will give you 3D. I had a laugh it because I was watching um, a video about <coughs> these new wonderful electronic gadgets they got out, the 3D TVs. And there's these three people standing in front of this screen watching it. And I'm there sitting there watching them in 3D as well as the TV in 3D. <laughs> I had a bit of a laugh about that. But I'm a serious scientific person, as you'll see from some of the videos I do. Um, I, I have the type of brain that can work out solve problems. Um, I really ought to have been a time and motion study man because I'm very good at working out how to do something easy rather than the hard way. Because being disabled, you have to lay everything out as you can. So when I'm cooking, everything's got to be to hand. So I don't have to keep moving around. Anyway, please, somebody help me. And you can try a very the very simple method. If you don't wear glasses, all you got to do is go to a charity shop. 20p pick up a pair of reading glasses take the dominant eye for you if you don't wear glasses take the dominant eye lens out that would be the right eye for me <laughs> so that when you go to the cinema you're looking at the you put these glasses on and <coughs> the image to your left eye or non-dominant eye remember if, if if you're right eye dominant that's it if not you have to reverse everything if you're left eye dominant but just do that check all you gotta do is look at your finger close your left eye and if it stays where it is your right eye dominant 
if you close your right eye you'll find it moves out the way I, I, I the fingers in front of the picture and when I move close that eye it moves right I can it's not even in front of the picture at all <coughs> but uh, <coughs> this is something scientists have known for years anyway and also the theory has been known that uh, the eye sees well, the brain interprets what it wants to interpret it. In other words, you've probably seen the trick where you've got a, a molded face mask. Um, one is concave and one is convex. And when you turn round to the convex side, the brain switches it, uh, the concave side, the brain will switch it to a concave image, despite the fact that it's convex, a concave, and it will become convex. In other words, it'll look like a normal face because that's the way the brain sees the face. And that's basically the principle this works on, and it's a, it's a proven scientific fact. Um, I'm just using it for a different purpose. So you'll, you'll find that what happens is <clears throat> the brain sees a lovely clear image with the dominant eye and a slightly defocused image to the non-dominant eye. And because it can't see a clear image, it uses the right eye... <clears throat> to uh, transcribe what it can't see. And because it knows things are three-dimensional, when it's looking at it, your brain knows that's supposed to be 3D, it will generate the image for 3D. If you were to look at the two images anyway of a 3D camera, you will find it's very difficult to tell which is which they're so similar anyway. So it's quite easy to confuse the brain into thinking it's seeing a different picture when it's not. <coughs> and also, <coughs> so all you have to do is trick it into thinking it's seeing a different one. That was, that was my first premise. And uh, I, uh, I worked on that principle. And that's where I got the idea from. And, uh, as I say, after watching this Doctor Who, I watched the same film using my glasses, and uh, I noticed that uh, I got the 3D effect just like it did with the BBC's glasses, but when the camera stopped panning and the picture became stationary, I also still saw it in 3D, whereas you didn't with the BBC glasses, because there was no panning. Anyway, there you are. That's it. Somebody help me, please. Uh, I don't care where in the world you are. America, anything. Um, pass it on to your friends. I'm trying to contact the world. Uh, I ain't got long to go. I'm 74 now, and I don't know how long I got left. So, uh, please help me out if you can. I hope I haven't bored you too much with my technology. But I had to do that in order to convince people that it was genuine, that they knew what I was talking about. Thank you very much. Please share me.